Hey everybody, I'm excited to be here for the second of this new version of Creative Living with Jamie. And oh, we're learning a lot. We're learning a lot as we learn to put this together. We're learning about, oh, you know that place, the distance between what you know how to do and what you don't know how to do. That distance between what you dream of and what it's going to take to attain it. And so we're in it. And one of the things that I'm reminding myself of and reminding you of is that sometimes we just got to get in it. It's the creative process that makes us ready. We're never ready before we start. As we get into it, as we start creating, as our projects start to teach us, as we start stretching, as we have a reason to stretch then what we create starts to prepare us for where we're headed. We are transformed by the creative process itself. And sometimes that's messy. Sometimes it's painful. In my case, it's public. (laughs) You don't have to do it that way. But one of the things I think is important is that we just dive in. We just start making. And... One of the reasons I believe that is so important is that when we create, that's what shows us and reminds us what we're capable of. How amazing is it that with even five minutes of our time, we can remind ourselves that we are capable of taking something from that ethereal realm of ideas and inspiration and possibility, that beautiful, magical realm, and we can bring it down to the earthly realm. We can make it happen. We can see a clue. Even if we don't fulfill something completely or beautifully or perfectly or any of those things, we can see a clue, a tangible clue of what's possible as we start to take action and we start to create. We remind ourselves that we can be an agent of change, that we can be a creator of magic. Where there was nothing, now there is something. Because we were brave enough, bold enough, ready enough to dive in, adventurous enough to try, to see, to put a pen on the page to type those words, to throw that pot, to wiggle our bodies, to sing a note. And when we do that, it's like the magic rises to meet us. We are signaling, I am here. I am available. I am listening. I am willing. I may not be ready, but I am willing to be a part of this world of creative magic, to make something. One of the things that happens sometimes when we make two is that we remind ourselves that we have always been artists. We remember that creative spirit we've always had. It's so funny in in my devotion program, which is a three-month program where artists come and really immerse themselves in creating and also in just embracing the artist they are. And sometimes at the beginning, it feels like that's putting on something or it's aspiring to something or it's trying to be something. But pretty soon what becomes apparent is it's just actually allowing something. It's simply being. It's just letting yourself be creative spirit, the artist, the dancer, the writer, the poet, the player that you have always been. Probably if you think back to when you were a kid, you can see all the signs. I know I was always dancing and playing with sparkles and learning how to stitch and reading books. And that was just a part of my life. And I'm so, I'm so thankful to my mom who really surrounded me with tools and treasures and opportunity to do that. I mean, I had a blue spotlight. I had red maracas. I had um, watercolor paints, um, a record player. 
and because she was an artist too, that around me I saw her fabrics, her sewing machine, her string art, her whatever it was. And it was just a part of the world that I moved in. And I'm so thankful for that. The other side too, of course, as most people do, I also have stories of all the places I got shut down in the arts, all the places where someone's feedback made me feel like I didn't have what it takes. I wasn't capable of, I I didn't have the right body to be a dancer. I was moving too quickly to be a visual artist, whatever it was. But whether I was receiving encouragement or discouragement, if I could just come inside myself, away from praise or criticism, away from any other influence, just into my own self, my own soul, my own body, what I knew to always be true is that the arts called to me that I loved to sing and I loved to dance and I loved to paint and I loved to draw and I loved to read. And that was just what felt like home to me. And it really didn't have anything to do with whether that was my career aspirations. It didn't have anything to do with um, someone measuring my ability. It was simply and truly who I am. Do you recognize that too? If you get rid of all the external voices, both the praise and the problems, and you just think to what has called you, if that has always been the arts, then I invite you to welcome that in, to embrace that fully, to stop defending or pretending or aspiring and to just be. To just remember this is who you are and this is what you love and that is all that's required here. (laughs) And so when you create, you will remember. Because when you are creating, you bypass this, right? All the stories will rise up. All those things you've heard a million times, you'll hear them again. Just let that inner compass of your heart keep following the art, not the noise, the art, not accomplishment, but the art. See, that's so ingrained in us that we feel like we're only allowed to pursue the art if we can show that we're good at it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just sing. Just dance. Just get your hands dirty. Just bake. Just redesign your room. Just play with color. And as you do that and you quiet those stories and voices, you will remember, oh, this is me. This is me. Creating will show you who you are. And creating will show you what you are capable of. You are capable of bringing something to life that was never there before. You are capable of bringing something to life that is uniquely you. That comes out of your perspective, your lived experience, your unique spirit are capable of embracing your artistic My guest today is someone who has done just that. I'm so excited to bring you another Devotion alumni, artist Lola Young. Lola was born in China, but currently lives with her husband and her three-year-old daughter by the sea in Israel. She is a self-taught mixed media artist who is inspired by nature and loves working in her minivan art studio by the sea. She makes collage art that reflects what a gift it is to be alive. She journals to find her inner voice and sketches to capture the beautiful moments of everyday life. She also leads creative workshops for those who believe in magic, just like she does. You can visit Lola and her mini van art studio on Instagram. Of course, I'll be sure to share the links. 
Enjoy this time with Lola. Hey there, Lola. Welcome to Creative Living with Jamie. Hello, Jamie. I'm so excited to talk with you. I'm so excited to have you here. And uh, everybody, I just have to share, like, recently, Lola and I celebrated 10 years of inspiration connection. And I'm so excited to bring her here on the podcast. So Lola, why don't you tell us all a little bit about you and about your creative life? Okay. So my name is Lola and I was born in China. And uh, right now I'm living in Israel with my husband and my three-year-old daughter. And my creative life looks like, um, so every morning I wake up around the sunrise and I take a short walk by the sea to my minivan studio. And when I arrive there, I light a candle and then I start my morning routine. Usually it takes about two hours and it's, it's a movement and a meditation and tarot card reading plus journaling. And if it's a new moon or full moon, I would do my new moon reflection practice and full moon connecting. And all of these takes about two hours and 8.30 I will go back home to have breakfast my, with my husband. And then after that, I come back to the studio again, um, spending time with myself until the lunchtime. Usually these three hours I will working on something I chose in devotion, um, the projects that I chose in the devotion. And then the afternoon, I usually spend the time with my girl and if evening that I have devotion, I will be in the studio again uh, a bit more. If not, um, I would just spend the rest of the day with my family. You've touched on a couple of things that I really want to dive more into. One is I for sure want to ask you more about what it's like to have a minivan studio. But also, I just want to mention for people who don't know what it is, devotion is a program that I have. It's a three-month immersion into embracing yourself as an artist, into creating your artwork. And um, I also have a mentorship program afterwards. And Lola did devotion and now is in the mentorship program. And so that's what she's talking about is sort of setting a goal, a, a something you want to create for your season and then spending intentional studio time for that. It's been and continues to be a joy to have you in that program, Lola. And for me, it's really... For me, devotion is my self-care. And once I join it, I, I think, why, why don't I care of myself better? It's nourishing me. It's just giving me energy. It really boosts my immune system, I would say. So <laughs> with you, all of you. One of the things that makes me, oh, I'm going to just have to go all over the place and follow all these threads because there's so much inspiration here. Um, I'm going to come back to the minivan studio, so don't let me forget it. But one of the places I wanted to take you was, I know that when you came to devotion, one of the challenges was, how do I be my full creative self? How do I be an artist and also a mom of a young child? And so, and I know on this side of it, so much has changed for you. Tell us a little bit about that journey for you. I, I look back really in the last 10 years, I would say my biggest, also the challenge is really three years ago that my time and my space was um, all of a sudden because I become a full-time mother and I'm wondering this full-time artist, wh where is where is she? I mean, where is her time and her space? So the minivan art studio, this is why I, I always believe challenge can bring me gift, which the, the space that I lost, I got a minivan now <laughs> and the time I didn't know how to make it. And now I have devotion. So this is my two biggest gift from the challenge. Tell us about what do you think it's like for your daughter to mm -hmm. like, how is it different for her now that you're saying I'm a mom and also I am an artist? What do you think the impact on her is? Mm -hmm. I think when she was two, I, I, I really felt um, that I couldn't fully spending time because whenever I have a moment, even she's sleeping, I can do my thing. 
but I'm around her and any moment that I can be, somebody can tell me stop. And this, and it never, I really never be interrupted like that before. So, so I, so I, I came to devotion and, uh, in the beginning it's, it's, it's difficult for her because she, she didn't understand how come you suddenly need to hide in a room for one hour, two hours. And also I can still hear she's crying or, but it takes, it takes time. But, it, but for her, it's pretty fast. I, I feel like almost one month, she, she's starting to understand that I have a date with Jamie and a lot of things. <laughs> A bit before she go to bed because the time difference it's around eight to ten o'clock so she will wait me until i finish and then she will hide me and we go to bed together and i, I think that, that there is this one month something that she need to get uh understand but but now for me it's it's such a blessing every time she she remind me hey or even we have the breaks between the yeah. motion motion she would she would remind me why you don't meet Jamie. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so sweet. It's it's it just I don't know. I feel my heart is um yeah. Now with her and her support, I feel this is really a gift that um, all the challenges I felt um, and also because of that uh, because in the beginning I feel also even i close the door but still i feel i want a space that is fully mine and i can really be focused that's why the minivan is also the ideas and the growing is also through the devotion and it's it's becoming um real so tell us about how did having a minivan studio come to life well, the the first first time when I heard about mini van art retreat, I mean, this forward is from Mindful Monday in one of the right. members, and I I just I just thought that that sounds every single word sounds so interesting for me. So instead of mini van art retreat, I thought about first to have a studio, and uh, and then I can even it's tiny, but I can fully. Um, they claim that it's my space and so I start to searching to spread the word I mean because when people ask me how did you find that like a lot of people around me said that that was also my dream but how did you make it happen I said I I, I ask everyone that I know here in Israel and ask everyone who have a land maybe can also borrow me or let me put them in like I just tell everyone and I trust the universe well um, when because I'm ready so whenever <laughs> that going it's so magic because I'm really living in front of the sea and uh, I feel even this tiny little space I don't feel I'm indoor especially in the corona time so much time at home I, I really feel I want to be outside but also I want to be inside uh, but 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 so close to the nature I and mean, for me nature is always inspiring me so it's it's a gift to be in a little minivan that is such a beautiful story what would you say to somebody out there who's like oh, just like you said that's my dream too how would you encourage them what would you say i i always tell people um because i i 10 years ago i heard it from you that you you said dreams do come true and yours too. And I always tell people that if anything that is happening to me, it means it's possible, whatever your dream that is possible too. And I always encourage people that it's never too late or too soon to start um, the life that you desire for. And uh, yeah, this is something I, 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 I wish that, but I heard from you 10 years ago and I started the journey. So. Oh my gosh. I, I also love your addition. It's never too late or too soon. Mm. What a beautiful, what a beautiful phrase to have tucked in your pocket to remind yourself it's never too late or too soon. Yes. Because when I first um, listened to your podcast 10 years ago, 
and I, I think it was Lisa Condon, like one of her, her interviews, and she said she started her journey in thirties. And I thought, okay, so I'm in my thirties, so maybe it's also possible for me. And uh, and then a lot of things change once I, um, I think once I <laughs> I met you, Jamie, really many many things changed and my whole life changed which i'm so happy and so grateful until today because I, I i left the job that i so i really love the day job in the gallery and uh, i also i started to practice art because this is something i never touch even i see people in the gallery artists or I'm around with artists, but but also somehow there's something. Um, I feel it's not it's not I would like to because I was surrounded by artists and in in the environment of art, but also especially um, now in the devotion, I I I more understand why that doesn't really nourishing me to make me feel alive every day to to go to work because once. Once I left the day job, every single day I feel so much more energy. I wake up even much more earlier because I don't want to sleep. I want to do I want to do it twenty four seven, and I it's it just I truly feel alive. And um, and I now I know it's called imaginary creature because because before the sizing, the size of the what what the artist or even the galleries that I used to work in the auction house it's so big and I, I I just and I I the more I touch it the more I know that's not for me but I don't know what is what is really for me so until until I quit and start to tasting because I also I still don't know what is the size that this imaginary creature looks like for me and until today I really can see the size and it's sweet and, and small I mean this animal and I know the art that I'm making the people that I'm serving there's and the, the work that I'm doing it's small and sweet and it's but I but I need to but I need to be there to to experience all of that and then find it um and also now I know how to put the words because before I just don't know I just feel it's not for me but now I understand why, and um, it's it, it's so it's so grateful. And I, I'm really really enjoyed the last ten years of practicing showing up every single day, and um, and also I understand there is many ways, many many ways to to make a living, and not just one way. And you must to to start it and trust that because so many people told told me that how can you leave a day job like like that there was but because i i'm really proving every single day that i live good and i know the life exactly the life that i want to live and very very detailed what kind of fabric clothes i want to wear and what kind of food so i know what the life i i would like to live and how much might cost and then i just for that to to live the life um without a day job or, or even I, I still work every day I work much harder but <laughs> I happier than before I want to ask you um more about how you show up every day but first I just want to talk a little bit about the imaginary animal concept for people just because it's something we talk about in devotion and I think it's it's a really useful way of thinking about our, our creative projects or the things we want to do and when we start off in that feeling of I don't know I don't know what it is I have no idea then I always think about it as like it's a, a invisible animal we don't understand it yet but the more we engage with it we start to understand oh this this is a big one this this is an elephant this is something that might take me three years or Ooh, this is like, I love your, this is small and sweet. Like this is something I do all, every day in small doses or whatever it is. And it, it becomes more and more and more clear, uh, but we don't have to start off. A lot of people start off thinking they need to know everything. Like I need to know it's a giraffe and it runs this fast and it lives like this and you feed it, but you don't. It's like you just, you start to 
let it come to life right in front of your eyes. So I'm so glad that's such a useful concept for you, Lola. That's exactly what you're saying because uh, I used to think until like there is no there there like uh, until that I will but, but now I understand that I only have now that I can I can use all I have and all I am to create to do to do the one step not there because there's really no there and it, I'm, we must engage with the work every single day like uh, as much as possible I would say mm. And that's been really important for you to understand that you as an artist, a part of how you work is that intuitive, spontaneous, like I show up and then I let the work lead me. So that having too much of a, this is how we're going to do it. It's going to be like this. It just, for you, some people, that's great. But knowing that's the way you work. And so I think that's related to showing up every day. So can you talk to us a little bit about your intuitive approach and how you how you do show up for your art on a regular basis how i show up to my work every day right that's the question yeah. because when i very first started i also don't know so what i'm going to learn because the resources that jamie you shared in, in 10 years ago that i the creative bike or the carlos on hand the and then understand there is, there's not, there's never bad student, only not good teacher. Or oh, I haven't found someone that's so inspiring me and so interesting. This is why I, for me, it become effortless because if, as long as I follow my curiosity, my interest and the class, because I really, I was zero. So there's so many things interesting for me. So, and I have all the time that I can spend and I, um, so I just keep one class after another class as long as I, I it's interesting for me and I just let let go and flow follow that and 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 actually the, the more the more the classes I take the more resource I get so I think it's it's it just abundant the resource and I think it's just those amazing teachers um, is I, I just follow my interest and <laughs> sometimes I don't know why, but, but, but the more I practice, the more I know, yes, this teacher, like Lynn Whipper, I, I love her or whatever she shared, I will, or Carla or in Creative Bug also, I have uh, like Lisa comment, like my favorite teachers. Um, so it There's, really matters. I hear that too. And we can get discouraged if we've had teachers that aren't a good fit for us, if we've had teachers that create a negative feeling. And we've all, this is one of the reasons I start the work I do is so many people have that situation where an art teacher has shut them down, you know, and they just feel so discouraged. I did. But then you find somebody like Lisa or Carla or Lynn and everybody, I'll make sure that all of these teachers are listed in the show notes. And that's why I, if I find a teacher I think is really encouraging and really offers also great skills, like that beautiful combination of giving you something actionable you can do and also keeping you really inspired and positive about going, I'll always share them. <laughs> Devotions also, because I also was looking for community or because you shared so many also creative coaching or there's, a lot of resource, but also the people that speak to me, the language that I feel um, very connected. And that, that's so important. And I feel so, so lucky that I find you and you're, you're truly the one that everything you say, even really, because 10 years ago, my English was also n n not like now. I didn't use it that much, but, but somehow your language and your language of, um, coaching, I would say, or, or your, you know, no, not just English language. It just really speak to me. And I think it's saying like the, the teacher, the, the arts teacher, all, all the teachers, they really make us feel so forgiving. So yeah. So, so relaxing and trusting and uh, there's nothing, nothing can be wrong and everything will be, 
I'm just, I'm so moved, Lola. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. And one of my, actually, one of my very most meaningful things to me about doing the podcast was when you shared with me that following along with the podcast and also with the transcripts helps you learn English. Like, I just, like, I, that moves me so deeply. And uh, I'm so glad I did those transcripts, <laughs> you know, and I'm so, I'm so that just makes me feel so happy. And um, yeah, so thank you for sharing that. That means a lot to me. Yeah, it's so helpful. I remember my colleagues at that time, they, they look at me because I remember one of, one of the podcasts because I always use the lunch break to go to in a, a little cafe because in, in the gallery, we, we're in, in, a, in a community. So there's cafe galleries. So I, I just take this, 20, 30 minutes, listen to the podcast, but because I have something that I can highlight and I print it and then I go, mm. even I, I, until today, I still repeat all, all the time, but I, I, I just feel the connecting, the connection with you by highlighting it because I must touch it and, um, you know, to, to lock it, remember it and all the homework that you gave, uh, uh in each podcast, I journal, I, I journaling about that i mean that was really wow practice I, I i i think the practice is really powerful that i keep um showing up and uh, asking myself and connecting listening to myself this it takes time and it becomes clear and clear and louder and louder until one day yes i know that's the way <laughs> What advice would you have for somebody if you were to cast back to who you were 10 years ago, for somebody who's listening, who might just be at that beginning point in their journey, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, I already mentioned, um, first, dreams do come true and yours too. And uh, there's really not there, there. There's only here that you can use all that you have and all that you are to make a step first step baby step and also it's never too late and too soon and <laughs> <laughs> um can you what, tell us a little bit about what's inspiring you right now or what are you working on right now um right now well i'm so inspired by the sky every morning when i walk from home to the minivan I look at the sky and there's the storm, the rainbow, the sunshine, all in one single moment. And for me, it's so powerful and rich and beautiful, reminding me how this life is just so rich. In, in one second, I can see the, all the stage. And so it really reminds me to be present in every each stage because they're all so temporary and love all of them. The rainbows, the storms, and um, yeah, that that that's so inspiring. The sky, I would say. And I'm working on in this devotion season. I'm working on the sketchbook project, and also um, the bookmaking, and also my tarot card book. Uh, lots of things, but yeah, but these are the things I'm working on um, today. And yeah, <laughs> I I just. Before we wrap up, it's interesting because it's a conversation we've been having in devotion lately about sort of being multi-passionate or working on lots of things. So I, I want to hear a little bit about what was it like to you to have several projects going and to move between them? How does that work for you as an artist? For me, it's really, really helpful because whenever I feel a bit stuck or a bit bored in this, I move to the other and then when I have time to look, to go back to this one, it's a, first for me, it's a, I can look at a fresh eye and, uh, and then also it makes me feel, wow, actually not just finish one. It's a lot of, like you call the, the fruit tree, like the tree, it's a small mandarin tree, right? Like there's, it's not maybe one giant thing. Also, yeah, I think I'm more, for me, it's, it works better for me that I'm working on many small things and then um and then changing the energy changing the eye and then really forget about the last step and just react from what is here now 
and I, I love to cooperate with my older self. Like some pieces are five years ago, some pieces are maybe two months older. But it's so fun to to look at old pieces and working on that again and again. One of the things that strikes me in having this conversation with you, Lola, is how powerful it is when an artist really knows herself, you know, mm. and really feels like you now know, here's who I am, here's how I work, here's what supports my process and my practice, here's the way, the kinds of things I like to, and it's so magnetic when you become that clear and honestly, too, I just, I, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong about this, but it just makes me think back to the beginning of devotion. And one of the things I always say to people is it's not about figuring it out. It's about just letting yourself tell, be the truth of who you are, right? You are also an imaginary animal, <laughs> you know? And so when you get to know yourself, you get to just be. Does that sound right to you? Is that, would that reflect your experience? Because I, I love mystery. I, I love not knowing um, or what I might be interested in next because I, 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 I'm interested in so many things. And I, I just, I love this, not knowing what's going to happen. It's like magic. Uh, of course, I, I guess the more, uh, the more I, I practice, the more I know my what works for me and also helping me to, to recognize it when it's appear and then I catch it because the more we know ourselves, the more the dreams, um, you know, I, I, I share with you something that is so interesting. I, I look back uh, because I was um, one day was sorting all the dream boards in the past. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that I would like to live somewhere next to the sea and I want to speak French. And at that time, I think I was visioning Marseille, I, I would say, but you know, until maybe four years ago that I arriving here, living here in Israel, I realized, you know, I do live by next to the sea and I do speak French because my father-in-law, he's from Morocco and he, I don't, my Hebrew is really little. So we do use French to communicate with each other. But who would think living in Marseille become living in Israel and talking with my father in law in French? Like it's I, I use French so much more because I, I the dream world also showed me all of these. That's why I learned French because I so love the sound and I mean that that's another part of the something I I, I so in love and I I, I want to I want to taste it more. That's why I learned French in Shanghai, but who knows that I would use it here in Israel. And there's so many people here from France and I, I feel so good, but I, it's sometimes I laugh. We don't know because dreams have layers and until, but it do come true, but you need to recognize it. <laughs> yes. It's and a powerful combination of your dream coming true and also being a mystery you know and so it's not exactly how you might have imagined it and it is exactly how you imagined it lola thank you so much for being here today you truly are an artist of magic and mystery and light and it is just a joy to have you here and to share your story with everyone thank you so much thank you jamie i'm so grateful thank you oh, before we go where can people come and find you most hang out in Instagram. So it's Lola Young Studio. And uh, yes, that's the place. And of course, we will leave links so it's easy for you all to find Lola. And I know you'll want to. <laughs> Thanks, Lola. Lola, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your story, your creative living adventure. And I'm so glad to have known you all this time and to really witness and celebrate how much magic has come into your life over these last 10 years. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Okay, everybody, before we go, I just want to share a bit of studio news. One of my favorite things I have on offer at the studio is the studio yearbook. Now, this is 
a seasonal guided journal. It's black and white because you bring the magic to it. You bring the magic through learning daily creative practices, weekly creative practices, monthly creative practices, and seasonal creative practices. And we are just getting ready as I record this to launch the spring studio yearbook. And you can see this is how it starts out. Everybody starts with the same, just black and white possibility holder. <laughs> and then as you work in it, here's my winter studio yearbook. And then as you work in it, you see it starts to get thicker. It starts to get full, full of your inspiration, your thoughts, your life. This is one of my favorite things. Oh, I love, this is my winter yearbook. One of my favorite things to do it is to put some uh, wrapping paper that I get for Christmas or for my birthday and to include it in the yearbook. You know, one of the things people often say about the yearbook is, Jamie, I don't know if my life is interesting enough or creative enough to be filling that yearbook every single day. And one of the things I know to be true is that every life is interesting. And we forget, we take for granted how much what surrounds us right now will be different in three years, in five years, in 10 years. I mean, the last few years have made that lesson very plain. But when I look at this particular wrapping paper and this wrapping paper came from, uh, see, I remember it came from a present from my sister Susie. And then I think back to what was wrapping paper like when I was 10? What was it like when I was 20? Different. And there's just a subtle joy in being able to come back to this and see, oh, that, that was the paper that we were using. Maybe eventually we won't use wrapping paper at all. I know I'm using it less and less myself. So it's a way of holding your memories. It's a way of inspiring your creative life. What I did when I created the yearbook was I took all the practices that I regularly do in my own creative life. So, um, for example, identifying my focus areas. Focus areas are categories that represent what is truly meaningful to you. Not what you think should be meaningful, not what other people think is meaningful, but the things that are actually meaningful for you. And then starting to use that to make your plans. It is a game changer. And it's something that's available in the yearbook. It's something that I do every single week. Now, I wanted to tell you something a little special that's coming up. And so if you have a winter studio yearbook, you're going to have an opportunity to participate in this. One of the things we do is make uh, dream boards. And so this is one of my monthly dream boards. We make them every month under the full moon. And then we do a practice of reflection on them. We really bring our artistic eye, our creative eye, our intuitive eye to what we have made in our dream boards and say, well, what do I notice here? What is this dream board trying to tell me? And then we do some journaling on that. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to people who have the winter studio yearbook, and I'm going to invite them to submit to me a picture of one of their dream boards from their yearbook. And I will do a reading of it. So I will have a response to it, ask some questions, share some insight to give you a better and better idea of how to engage in this magical practice of reading your dream board. So look for that. It'll be coming up soon. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I love having this time together. I know that um, we're still in the messy bits of learning what this new version of the podcast of the show is going to be. So I so appreciate your patience, your encouragement. Everybody wrote to me who told me they love the new video format. I know that some of us are listeners and some of us are watchers and also some of us have time that fits those different parameters. So maybe it's good for you to listen while you're walking your dog or doing the dishes or getting the laundry in or taking a break from work. And maybe for some of you, it's great to sit there on your Sunday afternoon, getting some creative inspiration and watching whatever the case, however you engage. I am so glad you're here. And I hope today there's been a lot to inspire your creative heart. Remember, when you create something, you remind yourself of who you are 
and what you're capable of. So please go out and create something today. I'll see you soon. Thank you.